Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here, back again with another video from my basics series. Uh, in this video today I want to talk about how to diagnose timing chain slack if you have it. So oftentimes, uh, when dealing with a performance issue, engine mechanical is overlooked. And this is something to check for. Now, I'm not necessarily speaking of, like say, uh, an overhead cam type of engine where you've got one big long timing chain. Uh, this method may not, be, may not work in that situation. It's also not gonna work if you don't have a distributor. Uh, so keep those things in mind. This is more for overhead valve pushrod type engines. Uh, there's still plenty of these out there. And when the timing chain does get some slack in it, it can cause some issues. Basically what happens is, is it can upset ignition timing because the distributor is often swined to the camshaft itself. It can also affect valve timing. And both of those things can affect engine performance in some pretty strange ways. So in this uh, video we're going to run through just a few simple checks to determine if you have timing chain slack. So rather than talking about it, let's get under the hood of the Ford here and get started. One of the first things we need to do is we need to figure out what size uh, the crank bolt is because we're going to have to turn the crankshaft during the process of this test. It is going to be a 21 millimeter uh, to rotate the crankshaft. So you're going to need some means of rotating the crankshaft. You're also going to need to know what direction the crankshaft normally rotates in. Uh, many engines rotate in a clockwise fashion, however some do not. Um, not too many that I can think of in this, in this style, but that's something you're going to need to be aware of. So now I'm going to grab a half inch ratchet to go with this socket. Now one of the first things we're going to need to do is line up the timing marks of the engine. Uh, and in order to do that, some engines this gets trickier than others. Some engines it's very difficult to access these timing marks. I'm going to say it's not hypercritical and that's in that situation you might be able to make your own mark on the crank. You're really looking for the amount of movement that you have when you're checking for the timing chain slack here. So once you come down here and take a look at what I've got, this is my indicator, or where my timing marks are on this. Come in here with a little, little brake clean and my rag. Try to clean them off so to make them a little bit more visible. I don't want to push too hard, but you can sort of see on here, now that I've done that, some of the marks uh, let me see if I can clean it up a little more and I'll come back. And now I can come in here sometimes with like maybe a little piece of emery cloth like this and it might make those numbers a little easier to see. Yeah, I think we've got the general gist of it. Now if I'm reading this correctly, you can see down here there's our zero mark. And I'm gonna line, I'm gonna call that our zero mark. And then up here above it looks like um, maybe two or four degree increments. It's really difficult to say uh, if I'm honest. But the top one up here, here's the most important thing. The top one up here is 14 degrees, it looks like. And really with our test, we don't want any more than seven. So if we know this is 14 total, then I would say halfway in the middle would be seven degrees and that's that's the magic number we'd be looking for. So the next step is to come over here to the distributor. At the distributor you want to remove the distributor cap and that way we can get a good view of the ignition rotor. Um, so the next step is to line up number one or line it up at top dead center on our timing marks over here and you'll notice that the ignition rotor rotates as I'm doing this. And you can actually make your own mark when doing this. That's acceptable also because as I said you're just you're checking for the slack. It's just easy to use the existing marks. There it is. See the mark coming up? Okay, I'm going to bring that down to zero down there. So that's my timing mark. I have it lined up with zero. Now note the ignition rotor over here. So you see the position of the ignition rotor and maybe if my cap is marked it will tell me that that's, yeah, that's number one cylinder. You can see the cap has a number one for the cylinder that it's on. Honestly that's not hugely important but it lets me know that I'm on the compression stroke because the crankshaft also rotates around on the exhaust stroke. 
to this same location. But the test, this is, this is the heart and soul of the test right here. So now you know that the rotor is lined up, number one, you're on TDC, you've got your timing mark and everything lined up. Now, you need to turn the ratchet in the opposite direction. You need to turn the crankshaft in the opposite direction. And what you're looking for is movement of the rotor. If it takes more than seven degrees of crankshaft rotation before that rotor moves, you have excessive timing chain slack. If it moves before then, you're good. But if that doesn't move till after seven degrees, then you have excessive timing chain slack, and that may be the cause of your performance problem. Switch my ratchet. And the other thing that's really important is do not turn the crankshaft in the opposite direction until you're ready to do the test. Now watch the rotor as I rotate the engine. You see it just started to move there. Looks like we're right at seven degrees. And just to confirm this, I'll rotate the engine back a little bit more, bring up the timing mark, and we'll, I'll show it to you again. But it looks like this timing chain is getting a bit worn out. Okay, it's right down on zero. Now I'll change direction on the ratchet again. Okay, and I'm gonna start rotating the crank and keep an eye on rotating the crank and when the ignition rotor actually moves. Okay, it started to move right there. Once again, we've confirmed that it looks like it's moved about halfway, and I would say that I'm right on the border of this timing chain having too much slack in it. So, when I pull this engine out of here, I'll take the timing cover off and we'll get a look at it and see if we can see and confirm that that slack is indeed there, but this test is, is how you would check to see if you have excessive timing chain slack. I hope this helps you the next time you have a performance issue with a overhead valve engine that, that has this type of chain setup. Okay, so checking timing chain slack can be an important part of diagnosing a performance problem on your vehicle if you have a vehicle with a timing chain of this type. Uh, as I said, it can affect cam timing, which affects valve timing. It can also affect ignition timing because the reason this test worked is because the distributor is directly splined to the camshaft itself. So if you have excessive slack, it shows up like this. Seven degrees is the magic number. As far as finding that seven degrees, if you only have a single mark on the crank, that's gonna be difficult to make that determination. But as you can see, I, I had a pretty good turn on the crankshaft before that rotor started moving. And that's basically your indication of how much slack that you have. The longer it takes for that rotor to start moving, the more slack you have in the chain. So that, that should give you. But as far as round numbers go, seven degrees is what you're looking Anyway, I hope this video was helpful to you, particularly if you were having a performance issue that, that might have something to do with this. Uh, if you have other automotive questions, uh, you can always head over to ericthecarguide.com. There's a welcome video there to tell you about all the wonderful features we have available to you that will help you with those automotive issues. In addition to that, if you wish to connect with me socially, I can be found on Google+, Facebook, and Twitter. And I close each of my videos with be safe, have fun, and stay dirty. I'll see you next time.